Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tech with Sach. My name is Sachin, a Google Developer Expert, and in this tutorial, we'll be continuing our Dialog Flow CX series. Once again, we have Lee Boonstra from Google joining us for today's session. I'm so excited to have you again on the show, Lee, and we're looking forward to see how we can continue our Dialog Flow series and how we can take this virtual agent to the next level. Yes, thank you, Sachin. I'm I'm super excited, and and welcome back, everyone. Uh, yeah, because today, I mean, we're gonna work on dialogue flow sessions. Uh, this is actually the the magic of dialogue flow CX, where we talk about pages and state handlers. Right. In the previous video, you saw us creating all the reusable resources, but now it's the time to hook and wire this all up so that you can build like a working conversation, and we'll try to make a more advanced-looking conversation. Awesome. All right. So we will talk about pages and state handlers today. And uh, a dialogue flow CX session that can be described as a finite state machine. Now, what is a state machine? Well, think of a, a vendor, a vending machine, like, like a candy machine, right? It travels through various states. Like for example, you can select candy, you can uh, put coins in the machine, you, uh, you can get the candy. These are all states of such a machine. And yeah, such a state uh, moves to various states. The same we can say for pages in Dialogflow. Pages, mm -hmm. they describe the states of a CX virtual agent. So when an end user interacts with Dialogflow CX, uh, with the conversation, the conversation moves from page to page. It follows a certain path. Mm -hmm. And um, exactly at uh, one moment, like uh, one page can be uh, active, that will be considered the active page. Mm -hmm. And that means that page is in a certain flow. That means that also that flow is the active flow. And for each flow, you can define many pages. They're mm -hmm. all wired up. And uh, yeah, multiple pages together that makes like a conversation. Awesome. Every flow has a, star a special default start page. Mm -hmm. And when a flow becomes active, then that flow becomes active. And that also means that it moves to the default start page. So the first page in that flow, which becomes active. And then it transitions through the various pages. That That's the idea. Um, okay. So Lee, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Just wanted to kind of, kind of summarize over here. So yeah. in our previous tutorials, we covered about how to set up the entire environment. We looked at uh, flows on a high level. We went ahead and created intents and entity types uh, and how we, we can kind of reuse those uh, intents and entities. Now, now that we've come into page and state handlers from a very high level, uh, let's think about it from like a movie scene, right? You have each scene by scene and within each scene, you have different actors and conversations happening and then you move to a next scene. So can yeah. we kind of uh, conclude that pages is very similar to that? Each scene is like within the page. So when you have a page, all the conversations that's happening within that specific scene or conversation flow is considered to yes. be a page. Yes. And then if you and then a flow uh, mm -hmm. to, to talk in your symbolic, a flow would then be more like the, the location where you're filming. So every right. time when you have a new, new location, mm -hmm. yeah, you start a new, like a whole new block. Right. And then the scenes are the various, yeah, yeah, the camera angles, the shots that you take. Awesome. Yeah. So the thing is with pages, they contain fulfillment and it can be static dialogue dialogues, eh? like where you hard code the text. This is what we will do today. Uh, but it can also be dynamic that you fetch to a webhook from, from a database online. Mm -hmm. And those, those, uh, fulfillments that that's one part, but we also have parameters. So these are more like the, the variable parts. Like for example, if I order a t-shirt, mm -hmm. yeah, then uh, size could be a parameter. And we have state handlers and state handlers. These are the controls that uh, make sure that you tr transition through the various pages. We call that transition routes. 
And um, we have uh, three different types of routes in Dialog Flow CX. We have the intent routes. Mm -hmm. This this is more like for, based on whatever you say, based on the intent, the intent that we created in the previous uh, video. So pages, they have fulfillments and mm -hmm. these can be static dialogues or webhooks. So static dialogues means like the, the, the response of the chatbot. Those okay. are hard coded where through webhooks, that means like the, the responses can be dynamic. For example, you fetch it from a, from a website, from a database. Mm -hmm. uh, it also uh, contains a page also contains parameters which can be uh, like the variable parts that it holds so for example a t-shirt size mm -hmm. size could be a parameter and we have state handlers and state handlers these are the controls that make sure that you can transition from page to page mm -hmm. uh, we do this through a transition routes and we have three different types of routes within dialect cx mm -hmm. intent routes condition routes and event handlers. Now, what is what? Intent routes. This is based on an intent match. So remember the last time in our video where we created all these intents based on natural language with training phrases. Mm -hmm. If there is a, a match based on the training phrase, if there, if there is a match, then it uh, transitions from a page to a page and you can set that up. Condition routes. That means like when a certain condition is checked. So for example, I could say like, I can only transition from one page to the another, in the case of the t-shirt bot. Mm -hmm. um, I can only continue an order when the t-shirt uh, uh, has a size. If you don't have a size, I cannot continue ordering the t-shirt. So maybe I transition back to another uh, response where I ask for well, what is the t-shirt size. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, these are the event handlers. That can be, for example, uh, for a fallback event that should be handled, or maybe there was no input, maybe there's no match, or maybe there is an event handler that uh, the database couldn't fetch the data in the backend, and therefore the webhook failed. Yeah. Sure. So I think to kind of summarize over here, and you've done a wonderful job so far, Lee, in kind of putting it all together. Um, so now talking about the different kinds of routes, we have the intent routes, condition routes, and event handlers. So intent routes, based on uh, the last episode, we kind of created intents. So whenever a conversation is matching a specific intent, then you can use the intent routes to go to that specific part of the conversational flow. Then with the condition routes, as you mentioned, uh, based on different conditions, like in the case you gave, you gave a wonderful example of different t-shirt sizes, based on different conditions, you want to navigate to a specific uh, part of the conversation, you can do that. And event handlers, as well. Uh, one more important thing that I wanted our audience to also understand is the fulfillment part, which is one of the most important aspect of uh, Dialogflow CX. And this is where you will start seeing the difference between Dialogflow ES and CX. With the Dialogflow Essentials, you basically had one fulfillment webhook URL that you can use to basically handle your entire conversation. But with Dialogflow CX, the, the cool thing about CX is you have the ability to have different kind of uh, fulfillment of webhook URLs based on different pages and, and based on different flows. So that is one of the cool things that you have with Dialogflow CX. Yes, exactly, because um, I'm a developer myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, often if I look in my own um, database designs or in my own APIs, Right. They often have these APIs have different URLs, so it makes a lot of sense to have a separate webhooks in the Ilocos CX. Where in Essentials, mm -hmm. um, you can still call multiple. I mean, you can still call various parts of the database, but then uh, what would happen is you would probably create more kind of a routing script on the backend, and that's the URL endpoint uh, for Dialogflow Essentials. The CX you can put multiple endpoints in. It's really cool. Exactly. So um, then there is one more thing that I'd like to mention before we will start with uh, with coding. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, the route groups. So if you have the idea that you're creating pages that all the time are using the same types of intents mm -hmm. uh, as other pages have, then it might make sense to just group them and put them in a route group. And then you just reuse the group. Um, makes it uh, better for uh, to manage, I would say. 
All right, so what we will do next is uh, we will um, start with our first flow, which is the default start flow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will um, wire up all the other flows. And remember that we created a catalog flow, we created an order process, so my order and a customer care flow. Uh, we want to uh, traverse through these various flows based on natural language, so based on what the user is saying. If I ask like, well, which bands are signed uh, in this record label, mm -hmm. then it should uh, move to the catalog flow. If I say uh, I have questions about my order, it should move to the my order flow. We're doing this with uh, with natural language. Let me um, show you what we're, how this will look like in CX. And so while Lee that. pulls up that yes. information for all of our audience who is joining us for the very first time on this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you can be notified for future videos. And if you're wondering what Lee just mentioned, check out the part one of this tutorial series on Dialogflow CX, yeah. where we've covered uh, intents and entities. Yes, because you really need those reusable resources that we created in the, in the previous video. Um, um, and I think in the description of this video, we will also put the link to the code lab. So if you want to build this yourself, yeah, you can do. Definitely. Yes. So when I open the Dialect CX, you see that there is not much things happening here. We see all the flows that we created, but they're all empty. There's just one start page and, and nothing is there. So we need to wire this up to create a, more or less like a, a diagram like this. And the way how we do that is we go to the build tab and then we select the default start flow and then we select the start page and it will opens up the page for us. We can click on the plus icon next to routes and uh, from here we can uh, choose the intent that we've created. And these are the, that's just why I'm saying these are the resources that we created, the intents that we created in the previous video. What we will do is we will uh, choose the redirect artist overview. This one contains the training phrases like uh, which bands are signed. And uh, we need to say like this, once there is an intent match, then we need to transition to the catalog flow. And from there, the catalog flow should pick up the conversation. So I scroll down to the transition block. I select mm -hmm. flow and then I uh, select catalog. So then it will move to this uh, flow and I should not forget to hit save. It doesn't save automatically. And once you've done that, then you should see that it's wired up in Dialect OCX feed. You see like a blue line. Mm -hmm. That blue line means that it's an, it's an intent uh, route. The orange uh, lines, I think, are conditions. And I think green lines out of my head. Uh, yeah, those are the ev event handlers. Awesome. And I think this is also a wonderful way of kind of visualizing how your conversational uh, uh, flow, right? Basically, your yes. conversational flow. So. Uh, for everyone who's uh, building it on CX, you have the ability. And just like how, how Lee mentioned, you can kind of replicate the exact same flow that she's kind of created in the code lab. And you can have the same kind of visualization or a similar kind of visualization in the CX tool as well. So um, what we're going to do next is we're going to, because we have to create a bunch of uh, yeah, connections now, so I, I'm using this table in the in the code lab. We will uh, continue with the redirect product overview, uh, which also needs a link to uh, the flow. Because there are various intent matches that can all go to the same flow. Eventually it picks up it at a later point in the conversation, but uh, from the very beginning, from the from the default start flow, we need to know like where we will deep link to. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, again, I click on the start uh, yeah, page the plus icon, and then I'm going to select all the, uh, yeah, the intents that we've created. Product overview goes to the catalog. Save. The next one is the shirts. Also to catalog. You won't see anything new in the diagram because they're all linking to uh, catalog yet. The same catalog, yeah. Same catalog, yeah. But uh, it will be. 
nice thing is that the filter also uh, it works really well. So don't need to uh, search and browse through all the intents like like how it was in Essentials. It's very easy to to find them. Right, and I think while you do this, uh, Lee, yeah. uh, one of the few things that I would like to highlight, and as Lee kinds of uh, maps this, these intents and routes, uh, as you can see, is whatever the intents that we kind of prepared in our previous code lab. So uh, just think about this: all of the intents that she's routing to uh, the catalog flow is whenever a conversation or whenever the user is having a conversation with your virtual agent, an intent will be matched against one of these intents. So let's say anything to do with product overview, it will get matched with redirect.product.overview. Anything to do with shirts, it will then match the shirts intent. So once the intent is matched, what are we doing? We are saying transition to a specific flow. In this case, we are choosing catalog. So that's what uh, Lee is basically doing at this point. Again, uh, in this code lab, you can go ahead and follow the tutorial, map out all the different intents and route it to the specific uh, or the respective routes or flows. So in this case, once the catalog is done, you would then move on to the customer care, my order. And finally, we'll also see how you can end all of this session. Yes, and here is the last one where I end the session. This makes sense because at this moment we're in the beginning of the flow. And if you say goodbye, for example, there is no flow, flow that you need to close. You just want to leave. So right. you're closing the session. If, if this would be hooked up to a telephone line, mm -hmm. then basically the, the call will disconnect. And now I can test myself and see if I did it correctly. It, and uh, one more thing, Lee, can you just well. go back to that start flow, mm -hmm. the default start yeah. flow? So this pretty much summarizes the entire thing, what we've done, right? So within the start yeah. flow, irrelevant of whichever the, qu the query that the user is coming with, uh, be it artist related, product related, shirts or music related. We have all of those routes that is handled. And based on that, we are then routing it to different flows. So in, uh, in our case, we have created the catalog, customer care, my order, and finally ending this session. Thanks Lee, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so you see that everything is wired up correctly because I see now all the, the various pages. And right. I see the, the place where it ends. So if I com compare this to, to here, you see the, the catalog we have, customer care, we have my order and session. Uh, we don't see order process. That makes sense because that order process, we'll see that once we dive into the catalog flow. But this, this looks fine. Um, the way how it would behave is kind of an... Uh, Think of like when you, you call to a, a service number with your phone and you, you go to an IVR tree. Mm -hmm. It kind of, kind of uh, behaves like this, except that this works through natural language. So uh, whatever I'm saying, it makes a hit and then it knows exactly like what tasks need to be fulfilled. And then that is the case where it, uh, yeah, it, it picks up that flow and, and addresses that part of the conversation. And one more uh, thing to note is while designing your conversational flow, make sure that you don't overuse flows 
for each and every conversations technically yes you can go ahead and keep designing multiple flows and keep linking and keep routing the conversation but again there's limitations in terms of the number of flows that you can create within dialog pro cx so i would highly encourage that you go through the documentation always prepare and plan out your conversation flow within each flow then you can have different conversations within that uh, which is what uh, lee will be showing us next yeah i think that's a good point what you're saying and i think if you would model it this way as a, a flow uh, it's like a, a certain subject or a certain task right yeah then then it's really nice it, it flow shouldn't be used that it's like part of a com- like yeah or in one subject but you divide it in multiple parts because you want to keep small flows no you really should think of yeah think of objects Exactly. Now, uh, there's one thing that I wanted to point out here eh, because I mentioned end session mm-hmm. and we, you can also choose end flow. And that makes sense for when you are in a flow that you want to close because um, this is a very uh, special yeah, functionality of CX that I would like to stress. Mm-hmm. Um, end so from session. A, uh, yeah? From a Go real ahead. use case scenario, uh, Lee, can you give us a difference when you would use end session versus when you would use end flow yes so an end session that closes the full chat session mm-hmm. or it closes the call where an end flow closes the flow and jumps back to the last active flow and this is a very important concept in cx mm-hmm. because you will need to close your flows once you jump elsewhere if you don't do this mm-hmm. then you might up with a nested conversation and you will you will see that also when you talk to the API because then you get uh, nested uh, error uh, messages in, mm-hmm. in your console. By default, Dialogflow CX will try to stick to a conversation flow until it reaches the very end. And while in a conversation, you can go to another flow that follows those pages t- until it, it reaches the end. So you need to uh, manually end flows to jump back. And session is like you close the session, think of it like you hang up the phone, mm-hmm. the conversation is over, you lose the, 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 the details. Well said, Lee. I mean, these are things that you wouldn't probably find in, you know, online or documentation. So that's why we have you as the expert who's yes. given us these pro tips. So thank you so much, Lee. These are really helpful. No, I mean, I, I, I've built uh, lots of bots uh, myself and I, I experienced these kind of problems, you know, uh, like nested errors. And then you wonder, mm-hmm. huh, what's wrong? But that has to do with uh, closing the flows. So be careful which one you pick and flow when you want to jump back to the previous flow where you were, where you left before. And uh, when you create complicated conversations, you will, you will see uh, the magic of this, that you can jump uh, back and forth. Cool. So what we will build, mm-hmm. uh, we will create, and I wrote I wrote down the script first. That's usually how I work. I write out the script and then I start uh, with, with pen and paper or with, uh, with a prototype tool that I've created. I start just drawing up uh, uh, like a, a simple flow chart. So I know like how pages are related to each other. And once I know that, then I start uh, configuring it in, in the tool. So mm-hmm. the the... The text copy or the script that we will follow is basically we say hi and at that moment the virtual agent will greet us with a welcome message we'll say like yeah welcome i'm the virtual agent of g records the fictional rock label and you can order artist merchandise you can ask me questions about order or shipping and i can tell you more on which artists are currently signed with us so how can i help mm-hmm. that moment i will say like well which bands are signed with the record label the following bands are signed was Google or G's and Roses, the Google Bikes or the Google Goals. Then the bot, what it will do is it will take my hand and will streamline the conversation. So it will always come with a return question. So it knows that I am guiding the conversation. So in this case, it will ask like, from which of these artists would you like to order merchandise? And then I say Alice Googler. Okay, that's great. Uh, we sell shirts, music, or the tour movie. Which merchandise item do you want? Mm-hmm. Can show some suggestion t- uh, chips here, uh, like either shirts, music, or two movie. And I say I want to buy a shirt. Then it needs to know, like, well, will this be a long sleeve or a t-shirt? 
I could deviate the conversation here. I could say like, well, what is the price difference between t-shirts and long sleeves? And it will mm -hmm. tell me a t-shirt is $25 and a long sleeve 30. Which one of these two do you want? Long sleeve or t-shirt? I said a t-shirt. What shirt size do you want? Mm -hmm. Let's say M. And then, okay, a t-shirt of Alice Googler M costs $25. Shall I continue the order? That is the end of this catalog flow. At that moment, I will move over to the order process flow. And awesome. the text will look a little different for music or two movie because when you pick music, then it will not ask you like, is it a t-shirt or a long sleeve? No, then it will ask you like, well, is this a CD or a, or a digital album? And if you say it will be the tour movie, yeah, then there's nothing to choose from. It will directly, uh, yeah, continue uh, or reach the end of the flow. Mm -hmm. So if I would draw this all together in a, in a prototype tool, then mm -hmm. you see that uh, the flow kind of looks like this. And you can see that suddenly conversations can become complicated or complex. Very complicated. Because, <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, that's why you see with all these wires that going crisscross because right. In a, in a natural conversation, if I would communicate to the, the G record uh, virtual agent, I might not need to ask like which artists are signed because I'm an Alice Googler fan. I know that Alice Googler is a band signed with this record label. I continue on to order the T-shirt, so I could say like, yeah, I want to order the the Alice Googler T-shirt size S. Mm -hmm. then I don't need to go through all these follow-up pages and questions. I know I already gave all the answers as a, as a, as a programmer. It basically means I gave already all the slots for the parameters that need to be filled in the database. Right. So I can continue the, the order process, but I could also ask like, Oh, which artists are signed? Oh, and what are the merchandise items that you sell? Mm -hmm. And at any point, I can always ask, like, well, what is the price difference? I could ask that uh, at this moment, like t-shirt or long sleeve, what is the price difference? I can say like, I want the t-shirt, I want size S, what mm -hmm. is the price? That means I'm not gonna retype and create more pages about price. No, I want to reuse these pages. Price is a, is a reusable page. Like I can, from any moment in time, I can ask like, well, what is the price? How much does it cost? I'm reusing this. So that makes makes it kind of complex. Exactly. Uh, and now buyers, I yeah, think um, parts, and reusing parts. Go ahead. Exactly. So I think uh, this is one of the classic examples of, you know, how we can use Dialogflow CX versus the Dialogflow ES, the essentials. Now think about handling all of these different flows and conversations within the Dialogflow essentials. Technically possible, yes but you'll have to be writing all of this logics uh, through your web book yeah. or through your backend. Now with the CX, yeah. we have this wonderful tool where we can kind of, you know, visualize, chart the entire flow. And as you said, the whole idea about going through these chatbots is not about going step by step. We can program it if that was the case. With a natural conversation, the user might just want to have a one simple conversation and get to that information at a quick uh, and easy way. And this is where all of these different complexities and natural uh, language uh, conversation and understanding comes into play. Yeah, and I guess this is, this is really the magic of Dialogflow CX and the tool. And right. people always ask me like, well, which tools should I use? Should I use Essentials or should I use CX? And I mm -hmm. would say it really depends on the complexity of your bot. Mm -hmm. If you're building very complex bots, you might want to choose CX because if you would choose essentials, that would mean that you would need a developer writing lots of backend code to either reuse things by using maybe events, mm -hmm. or you will have lots of duplicate text in, uh, in Dialogflow essentials. That's also not something that's, that's ideal. So this is definitely here. You can see the magic of CX. It, uh, it, it, it like. Yes, it, Dialogflow CX comes with a higher cost, but it pays out. Like if you have complex bots, you will immediately see like, yeah, this is this is a big win. I can quickly exactly. or relatively quickly build a, a conversation. And you've yeah. kind of touched upon a very important point over there, uh, Lee, which is the pricing. So for everyone who's actually going through this tutorial series, I would highly encourage that you look into the documentation 
look at the pricing for both Dialogflow Essentials as well as uh, Dialogflow CX. Of course, at the, at the time of this recording, Dialogflow CX is uh, a bit higher than Dialogflow Essentials, but you get all of these tools and different capabilities that you, it comes with CX. As uh, Lee rightly said, if your chatbot or virtual agent is supposed to just do a simple task or a specific flow, you can go with Dialogflow Essentials. And with Dialogflow CX, if you have huge uh, complex conversations that you need to handle and you have different departments, different teams who wants to work on uh, each of those specific set of conversations, all of that is possible with uh, Dialogflow CX. Yeah, it, it makes more sense. And I think it also uh, allows you to do a lot of things in the tool, whether uh, in essentials, you needed to do it through the API. So right. if you have a team that has more bot designers or copywriters, mm -hmm. they might feel more convenient with a tool like CX. Yeah. And for the developers as well, as, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, you don't have to basically maintain one uh, webhook and manage all of these different complexities. So anything to do with catalog, anything to do with customer care, anything to do with order, you can have different webhooks for different functionalities. So that's also an added advantage with CX. Yep. All right. So I, I think I will uh, start continuing wiring up all the pages for the, for the catalog flow now. Mm -hmm. um, Let's, uh, let's go with this. So I uh, select the build tab and then I select catalog. Again, this is an empty flow because there's nothing there yet. I select the start page. We click on the plus one and uh, we'll start uh, to add new routes. We uh, choose the artist overview. And maybe you're wondering like, hey, these are the same uh, intents as the intents that we used before. Mm -hmm. That's true. And the first time what we did was we would we would move from the default uh, start flow to the catalog flow, but now we need to capture it to find it uh, to to start the right part of the conversation. Do I start with which artists are signed, or do I immediately jump to I want to order the t-shirt size S? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and we choose uh, redirect artist overview. Then we scroll down through transition and this time we're not selecting flow, but we're selecting page mm -hmm. and uh, the pages are not there yet. So we're going to create these now. So uh, what you can do is you can uh, click on the pages drop down and then you choose plus new page. And then I give it a name and this name will be artist overview and I hit save. And if I, you'll see. Now I created one new page with an, uh, an intent match to artist overview. Mm -hmm. And now we will start creating all the other uh, transitions to all the other pages. And this will, uh, yeah, take, take a bit of time. So we'll definitely probably be speeding up this entire session. But yes. as you can see for each and every um, item that Lee is routing right now. It's the same process. You'll be wondering why is there when she clicked on catalog, there was only start because in the previous one, we were working on the default start flow. So each flow has a start. So within that, you write the conditions or the different routes. So as uh, we've seen so far, we've all been doing intent routing, correct uh, Lee? So we've been doing intent routes right. We've been adding the different intents that we've created in the previous tutorial. Uh, we are matching it up with the right uh, flow. And then in this case, compared to the previous one, uh, Lee is actually uh, redirecting it to specific pages. So now you will start seeing that within each of the flow, especially when it comes to catalog, within catalog, you'll have different pages where different things and functionalities will take place.
So now the next one is the redirect end. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to be able to end the full conversation uh, and, and hang up the phone basically. And what I also want is I want to uh, create a route that uh, jumps back to the main menu. Not really mm -hmm. a main menu, but let's call it that way, like the default start flow. And for the users, uh, just one more thing to highlight over here is the fact that Lee keeps mentioning that apart from all of this, she also keeps mentioning about, let's say when you're having a conversation through a phone, uh, the end session will basically end the call, right? So you'd, you must be wondering, okay, we are here to build virtual chatbots or virtual agents. What's to do with the whole uh, phone scenario? Uh, as you, as uh, some of our audience already know, uh, with Dialogflow, you have the capability to kind of integrate with different platforms. Yes, whatever Lee is building right now can be uh, in the form of a messenger bot. It could also be deployed as a virtual agent through a telephony gateway. So what that means is just think about a classic example of banks. Right now, whenever we call the banks, it goes through the classic IVR setup, uh, press one, press two, press three. Then when you go within that, again, you'll basically say, okay, press one for uh, credit card activation, press two for so and so. And it keeps getting frustrated. In my case, I've personally know right now what are those numbers and I just go ahead and do that. But with Dialogflow, uh, virtual agents, what you can do is the user can basically call the number and directly ask, a con uh, ask for a query and the virtual agent will be able to give you the response immediately. So you don't have to go through like a traditional IVR setup. So that is also one of the cool advantages of using a virtual agent. Yes. So we're almost done now. Mm -hmm. Now you see like I'm still like in one level deep right we're not not any deeper um the next level uh, of nest uh, is, is what i'm going to create now so i'm going to select now the artist overview node the artist overview page mm -hmm. and i will uh, link this to the product overview so i uh, select the the artist uh, overview one mm -hmm. i can click on the plus bed routes select the product of artist and then uh, the page already exists, product overview, and I'll hit save. Now you can see that things start to uh, look differently. Let me move back to the original. See, so you see like here, these these are the first level where you can jump into, but I, I, could, I could go to product overview directly, or I can go to product overview by first asking like which artists are signed, and then it will bring me to the product overview. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's continue this. Uh, what we will do now is uh, I click on the artist overview, artist overview page, and I'm gonna edit the fulfillment. So now I'm gonna show like a static message. Now it becomes interesting because this is also the moment now we can start interacting with the chatbot and testing it in our simulator. Mm -hmm. So in the agent says we just copy this page. Like the following bands are signed. I was Googler. Google, uh, yeah, the Google Dolls, Cheese and Roses, and the Google Writers. Mm -hmm. I hit save. And I also need some text on the product page, product overview page. I'll select the product page and um, I click edit. And the product overview says, like, we sell t shirt or we sell shirts, music, and the tour movie. Hit save. And now I think we can already test something. We click on test agent that will open the simulator and uh i say hi here See, it starts with the welcome message it says like welcome i'm the virtual agent of g records mm -hmm. um, 
this you might wonder right why does this look so different uh it just shows you the json code but it this is really depending on the integration that you choose so if you uh, pick the built-in dialog flow messenger like the web widget to show it on your website then you see nice suggestion chips mm -hmm. if you build something custom yourself then you need to uh yeah look into this json in order to uh, maybe build your own carousel so let's assume that um, if you're building your own uh, chat interface um, so in that case you might want to have your own custom payload to kind of render different ui elements uh, within your chatbot so that's yes. where this would come into play but in this case uh, i think glee what she's shown right now is uh, the rich content or rich responses that the dialog flow messenger basically expects so when right now if you look at it it's a rich content what are the op so these are the different options and within the options you have different text so and the type over here is what is the types these are suggestion chips, chips. so when you are rendering the same conversation in a dialog flow messenger you will see along with that initial greeting text you will see suggestion chips which will basically be like small buttons in the form of a pill shape which will say uh so yeah so i think lee is actually showing us in yeah. real time how it looks like perfect so those are basically the ones that are rendered so as she said depending on different platforms you need to pass different custom payload and the one that she's using over here is one for dialog flow messenger yeah and here you see that these two intents should work so let's mm -hmm. give it two tries i'll first uh say like well which artist are signed and it says tell me like the following bands are signed uh, alice googler g's and roses google is not in the, in the google dolls um wait a minute we should see um a, a follow-up i think we'll figure that out later let's try the other one see if that one works Maybe we just need to continue the lab and I'm too early with testing it. I think. Which product should also work? It tells you like we sell shirts, music, or the tour movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what in order to move from artist overview to the product overview, um, let's, let's take a look. Let's see if that went well. If artist overview, the following bands are signed. We should actually ask an, uh, a follow-up question here. I'm not sure if, I think we'll probably do that in the later steps, mm -hmm. but it basically should ask like uh, in a second, like which, yeah, which artist would you like to order music from, from mm -hmm. or merchandise from? And uh, Lee, can you also, uh, just for the sake of uh, showing our users, click on that mm -hmm. add dialog option again so that they get to see all the different options that yeah. you can so here's the custom payload that you could pick awesome yeah. let's uh let's continue the lab and then um i'm sure that we at some point will uh yeah. come through that yeah get, have it working yeah so page parameters yeah, these are used to capture and reference values that have been supplied by the end user during a session. So each parameter has a name and an entity type. So in our case, uh, we have the artist name because we need to collect like which artist has been, uh, uh, do you want to buy the merchandise from? And, and what is the mer merchandise type that you want? Uh, so those are uh, the, the very minimum parameters that every uh, part needs to have, whether I ordered a tour movie or the or the music or the t-shirt, I always need to know like, well, what is the merchandise item and from which band? Now for t-shirts and long sleeves, I also need to know the shirt size in order to continue a purchase. And if you order music, you also need to know like, is it a physical CD or a uh, or a digital uh, uh, CD like the carrier mm -hmm. and, and the album name, uh, is it the live album or uh, the greatest hits. 
and and some of these parameters will need to be marked as required because you cannot continue ordering it uh, without those parameters so we need to mark that as required and that, that way our conversation always knows like oh if we're missing those parameters then it needs to yeah uh, come back with a, a part of the conversation to, to ask us for that yeah so i think the, in in terms of the entire conversation flow uh, this is a key component because based on these page parameters we are gathering the information from the user and this is only if we capture all of these information we can kind of you know write the logic to move on to the next flow yeah so um for parameters yeah, they're part of a session and mm -hmm. um we will we will show respond messages and those respond messages will be as added to the response queue so during a conversation's turn Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's possible and sometimes also desirable to have multiple fulfillments yeah, each way that may generate a response message. Um, so sometimes the response message comes out of an event handler. Mm -hmm. yeah, like for example, like you didn't receive any input. So I didn't receive any input or, hey, again, what is the t-shirt size that could come out of a different response uh, place than, than from the entry response. The entry fulfillment, as you've seen, and yeah, that is basically you get that when when the page gets active. But there are various pages where you can put the the, the static response, and you will see that today. I will I'll point that out later. Awesome. Yeah. Let's let's continue with building the the working chapel because we saw already that we couldn't move from artist to a product, even though uh, the the line has been created, and that's probably because we need to create more. Uh, we we need to collect the the parameters. Yeah. So uh, in the catalog flow, we select the artist overview page. And uh, from here, we click on the plus next to the parameter section. And this is where we will add the, the artist parameter. So we write down this by name artist, and then we select the entity, the custom entity that we created in the previous video. Mm -hmm. It should be their artist. And we tell them like, yeah, this is a required parameter because I always need to know the band name in order to order merchandise. And uh, if you spell the band name wrong, if you uh, say G's and Roses without the, the comma, uh, the quote, that's fine. And it should know what you, all you need. You mean G's and Roses. So redact in log. And uh, now we need to create like another uh, response message from which of these artists would you like to order the merchandise? Um, yeah, that is if the artist parameter hasn't been collected by the virtual agent yet. So you cannot move on till you collected that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll we'll put that somewhere. And where do we put that? We'll get this engine added to the response view. So you put that in here in the initial prompt fulfillment. So that means like if I continue, I always need to get this question. Hey, this is why I, in, in my previous, when I tried it out, why mm -hmm. I didn't uh, ask me a follow-up question is because I put the follow-up uh, question here. Like in order to continue, you need to have the artist uh, artist name. And I put it in my case in the yeah, parameter, uh, the fulfillment of the parameter. So from which artist would I like to order the merchandise from? Yeah, you can click um, save. I'm not done yet. I want to do something else here. I want to add a second dialogue option that mm -hmm. shows uh, more of these suggestion chips as that uh, session uh, explained earlier. So I can uh, click on add dialogue option, custom payload, and I paste in the code. Okay. Awesome. So when within the parameters, when the, the initial prompt will basically ask that question right so when the conversation comes to this part of the the flow it will say okay from which which of these artists would you like to order the merchandise and then the next uh set that we've configured over here is a custom payload which will then show the suggestion chips like how we've seen in the dialogue flow messenger yeah awesome now um if you when you scroll down and uh, you see these event uh, handlers and uh, there are also uh, lots of uh, options that you can choose from when you click an event mm -hmm. and you can create a no input or no match no input that means like uh, 
nothing was entered mm -hmm. where no match means like yeah i'm saying something but there is no intent match made like there's no intent that that has that those training phrases and therefore there was no match and you can create like specific event handler uh messages i think we will in our example we will create both so we first create the no match and our text will be a bit different in this case so in the case of a uh, no match you can say the no match default you can have a various a variance in no match like if, if, if the second time was again no match then i can create a, a yeah I create no match one or i could even no match two if possible so i and think this is also me, like mm -hmm. sorry no, I was uh, saying, Lee, this is also a pretty important uh, tool or feature, which is because, as we all know, there's for sure you'll have conversations where the user would probably take time to digest the, you know, uh, information. And then they might be, let's say, in a, in a phone conversation, the user might actually be taking time to say, okay, what should I say next? So at that time, there might be a, uh, so you said that uh, there's a no input event, right? Yeah. So that would then get matched. So then you can have a conversation, follow-up conversation with saying that, okay, I missed that or I didn't hear that properly. Can you repeat this? And then reprompt the user with the exact message. So now what Lee is showing is if the conversation that you just said just doesn't match, uh, there's no intent matched for that, then you can have custom uh, responses within each of these event handlers. Yeah, and you see that also in the text that I am returning. So in mm -hmm. this case of a no match, I tell them like, well, I missed that. Please specify the artist. And you can choose between Alice Google or Jason Rose as Google Golds or the Goofitis. Which of these artists do you want to buy merchandise from? This is very uh, important in the case of building voice bots or voice mm -hmm. in telephony uh, contact centers because there are no suggestion chips, you know, and the user doesn't know what uh, uh, how to move from one page uh, to the other because there is no interface, there's no screen. Um, so exactly. like messages like these are very essential. Now, if I would create the no input message, this message is a little different where I'm, I'm more specific on like, I couldn't understand what you just said. So it knows like, oh, it, I'm saying the right thing. I just need to articulate better or maybe, yeah, say it on a slightly different way in order to uh, have the system understand what, what I'm trying to say. So uh, no input default. And then the agent is, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand the artist's name. And you can choose between and then all the artists. And hit save again. All right. Now, um, let's have a look and see if I can uh, test it now in the in the simulator. Mm -hmm. I go to integrations. It's the welcome message. I first ask which artist, and then ask me like, okay, well, which artist would you like to order merchandise from? See, this is I by accident added this message extra. I need to remove this. Mm -hmm. But uh, the suggestion chips are here: the Google Dolls, the Google Vitas, Alice Google, or Teas and Roses. I pick one, and then it goes to the next, or it's supposed to go to the next one. We need to create the condition, which is what we're going to do in the next block. And uh, the condition basically says like, oh, if I have the artist name. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to the product overview page. Let me uh, first fix the the broken text that I created. That was this one. We don't need that anymore. Yeah. Okay. So page conditions or conditional routes. Yeah, this is like a certain uh, condition needs to be uh, yeah validated in order to continue the transition or to transition back or to stay on the current page. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be uh, a parameter equals a specific value or a parameter that might be missing or maybe a form that like the page it didn't collect all the parameters that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is typically what you do with uh, conditions. And I think a classic example of this would be, let's say within uh, the page, right? So within the page, let's assume that if you want to capture three kind of information, three different types of information, let's say name, uh, 
name mobile or email just for the sake of you know example so when you want to capture these three information with conditional routes what you can say is until and unless i get all of these information captured only then move on to the next flow or next uh, page or end the conversation so the transition should only happen once all of these conditions are met so that is where the conditional routes come into play you can also write different kinds of conditions but i think uh, lee would give you an example of how that is done yep we're going to do that right now actually so uh what we will do is we will select the artist overview page mm -hmm. we uh go to the routes block we press plus this time we're not selecting an intent because this is a route condition so we scroll to the condition block the condition section and here you can uh, pick one of the rules like either you need a match one this is an or rule or maybe you can rule an end rule that means like every condition needs to that uh, or you can customize it we will select or and uh, we will write down the uh, expression which is uh, uh, status uh, that means like yeah the the page need to collect all the parameters mm -hmm equals final that's how you say that so basically it means like we need to collect all the parameters in order to move on well in our case there is only one that's the artist so i could also create a condition say like the artist name needs to be uh yeah one of these options i, I could have done that as well and uh, leave for yeah. uh, everyone let's say if a user is getting into dialogflow cx and uh, he or she is basically exploring this entire thing for the first time and you they want to see what are the different conditions that i can use what is the syntax how do i go about doing that there is actually a page uh, on the on the in the google cloud that you can mm -hmm. i think you can find i think it's this one shows you all the options that you can choose from yeah wonderful yep um now we will uh, put some fulfillment in there we need to confirm that the selection was uh, yeah have been made yeah so uh, in this case we will say like okay alice googler great choice rock on uh or you want to rock and we create another uh, another alternative uh text you want to rock with some alice googler merchandise awesome mm -hmm. all right hit save so that session dot params dot artist will actually have the artist value, right? Yep. And then follow up with the text. Yeah. And the last thing I forgot almost to do that, but this is the most uh, important part. Now we need to make the transition. We need to say like, okay, and now go to the product overview page. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we select product overview as a transition and then hit save. And we should see this now in our uh, yeah diagram. Yeah, you see, like we have start and go to artist overview and from artist overview. Yeah, there is a route that is uh, directly uh, set. If you directly ask for the, if you, let's say if I say like, yeah, I want a t-shirt, then it goes into product overview. Mm -hmm. Or if it um, came through like which artists were signed. Oh, I want to have a t-shirt. I want to have merchandise of Alice Googler. Okay. And then it goes to artist overview. And I think uh, now we are slowly starting to see the different color codes that you were talking about. Yep. Right? The or the yeah blue for intent matches and the orange for orange, uh, orange yeah. for the conditions. Uh, conditions. Yeah. And again, let's let's test this. I can test it in the simulator. Let's say hi. Which uh, artists are signed with your label? me like oh these are the uh, artists i want something from alice googler okay alice googler great choice rock on we sell shirts music or the tour movie great that's it so far we need to move on and add more uh yeah routes and and pages in mm -hmm. order to uh, traverse to this conversation Uh, okay, let's go to the product overview page. And from here, we will create uh, more parameters. In this case, we will create again the artist. Mm -hmm.
now for this one, we will create a route which will transition to the product page when an artist is provided and the merchandise item is provided. So we need to create another condition, but this time it's the end rule where we say uh, we have an expression uh, that says like the, the session parameter, like this is a parameter of the full session. So regardless of where I uh, provided the artist, mm -hmm. I, uh, I get the artist uh, that cannot be null, need to be entered. And I need another one. I need a session parameter of the merchandise that can also be not be null. So it can, I have to specify artist name and I have to specify the, the, the merchandise item in order to uh, continue. And mm -hmm. the fulfillment will tell me, all right, a t-shirt of Alice Googler, let's go. And then I transition to a new page. Oh, no, wait, the page is already there, product. So one question over here, Lee. So yeah, what happens when the user doesn't provide both. So let's say the user provided only one of the conditions. Yeah. How would the yeah, conversation so basic, go? In my case, I mean, and this is probably, I could probably improve this uh, better because mm -hmm. then you're, you're still stuck. You're still stuck in the, in the product overview. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably, probably created here with artists, we created like um, event handlers, right? No match right. or input. So mm -hmm. if you would enter or like, then it will reprompt you again, like, hey, I need to know the artist or, hey, I need to know the merchandise, but you are staying on the product overview page. You're never transitioning mm -hmm. uh, back to uh, for, towards the product. And I think a best practice, I didn't do this in this lab, but I would say it definitely is a best practice that when you're creating conditions uh, and you're, you're checking on uh, no or not no, then there should be also a route that continues when, when it is no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to reprompt the here, user yeah. to the right, you know, yeah. conversation. Exactly. But you will see in our case, this will work because like if you stay on the chatbot and you, you don't enter anything, you hit enter, it will still continue to reprompt uh, the previous question in order to ask you mm -hmm. uh, this. You see this now also, eh? it's nice now in the, in the diagram you see like product overview and you can only go to product or you can go from product only to from product overview only to product if one of the conditions is met or i directly go to product but that means that in the product page i also need to check for the parameters if those uh, parameters are present if they are present it's fine but if they're not been uh, given then i need to ask, ask and reform for it again right and i think uh, uh, this is also a good example of what you told earlier when you're visualizing this entire flow, uh, you can see within the catalog flow, you have different pages and then you have the blue routes, which are basically yeah. like intent matching. And then we can start, you're starting to see that orange as well. That's based on the condition routes. Perfect. So now if we would uh, select the product overview again, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like here it's uh, listening specifically to the artist name or the merchandise item, but I could also say, I want a shirt. And then I don't know really if it's a long sleeve or a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, we will do this through the intent routes. So uh, if we click on plus next to the routes, then we select uh, the shirts intent. Where this one uh, basically has the training phrase, like, yeah, I want a shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, this one then will, uh, Transition to shirts. The shirts page is not there. We will create it. And the same is for music. Oh, wait, this page was already there. Yeah, shape. And the same is for music. If the user says, uh, I want to buy music. Mm -hmm. And then I still don't know, do you want an, a, a digital album or MP3? So uh, yeah, we're creating that intent. And then I remember that in our diagram, we also would always uh, deviate to uh, to the price. So that's what we're, we're going to ask now. Like we're going to create the intent, like, uh, yeah, what's the price difference or how much does it cost? The price. And this will, will go to the price base. It's not there yet. Okay. 
let's see what we have so yeah now it's already more advanced right so i mm -hmm. can go directly to product or music or price or or shirts right Might look a little different uh, in your case. This is, but it's, it should be fine. So by now you've learned how to create flows, entities, intents, but also pages, and we know how state handlers work with intent routes, conditional routes, and parameters. And uh, later in yeah, this tutorial, we will do some conditional branching in the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, I will now just continue uh, to finalize this this flow. So here I'm going to do something special. I'm going to set a parameter preset. That means that every time when I hit this page, I'm going to uh, secretly set a parameter under the hood. Uh, this means in the case of shirts, when the user said, I want to buy a shirt, mm -hmm. then I'm, set, I'm setting the flag. Yeah, the, the category is shirt. So later on, I can check like if, if it was a shirt, was a t-shirt or a long sleeve provided. Mm -hmm. So it's a preset and the way how I set this up is I can click on the page, search page, I click on entry fulfillment. So as soon as the page becomes active, then I'm going to set a parameter preset. And uh, here I'm going to create the parameter is called category and the value will be shirts. Mm -hmm. So the moment the also, conversation yeah. comes to the shirt page, the entry fulfillment will automatically give that static fulfillment yeah. which is like do you want a long sleeve or a t-shirt i think we've also uh, showed uh, suggestion chips over there and then yep. you're kind of setting up the parameters yeah i'm going to show this in the in the simulator so you can mm -hmm. see it actually so say hi see how far we can go which artist you have let's googler Uh, which merchandise do you want? I say shirts. Look at here, you see the parameters that have been collected so far. I specified mm -hmm. Alice Googler, that has been set. Now I said, uh, what merchandise item do you want? Uh, the suggestion chip will, sh will ask music or shirts, mm -hmm. because I don't want to show endless amount of suggestion chips. I could have said t-shirt, long sleeve, album, uh, digital album, but I think it's a best practice uh, of voice or, or conversation design to just not give more than three suggestion chips. Correct. So in this case, I uh, group them as shirts or music mm -hmm. and um, the suggestion chip basically says shirts. So I would say shirts and now you see the preset parameter will be set to category shirts. That's handy for me later on if I, in case I want to check if, uh, if the user came to the shirt category and pick either one of these. Mm -hmm. The price one uh, will we'll set the text in as to do. We can uh, create later like a conditional um, text, dynamic text here. Uh, we'll do this later in the next uh, set of uh, instructions. So for mm -hmm. now, we just put the placeholder. But I can continue um, with putting the parameters and the conditional routes in. Uh, so so this, these are all price related, correct? This is price related, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you'll see that I start uh, checking for the, the shirts category. Mm -hmm. So I create a condition and this condition should be end where the session parameter cat if the correct if the category mm -hmm. shirts equals shirts, then uh, and the merge parameter is null. means like yeah we were in the in the shirts 
page. Mm -hmm. but we never, uh, yeah, but we never ask uh, if it's a t-shirt or a long sleeve. So that that's what we're we're gonna direct them to. So then, transition to a new page shirts. Uh, yeah. So this is in the price page eh? that where where we at. So if you're in the price, so if you ask, so this means like you're, um, you, yeah, you get the question like which item do you want? Uh, I, I want the t-shirt or a long sleeve. And but you deviate, you're asking like, well, what's the price difference? Uh, I answer the question like, well, t-shirt costs X and uh, long sleeve costs uh, so and so. Mm -hmm. But then you need to direct go back and ask like, yeah, but in order to continue, I need to know, yeah, was do I already know, like if it's a t-shirt or a long sleeve in order to continue? Hence, I am uh, navigating back. I think we'll see this now also in the, yeah. So you're in the, you're in the shirts and you can, but you can deviate, you could go to price, but we need to know the shirts in order to, uh, to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we do the same, um, for shirt size. Oh yeah. The next uh, follow-up question, if you picked a shirt, you need to know what the shirt size will be. So if it is, uh, the category is shirts, mm -hmm. but there's no size being set eh? because maybe the user set it out of its own. Eh? Maybe it says, I want the Alice Google size, uh, shirt size S. Then you don't need to ask for this question. But if, if user never talked about sizes, then we need to, uh, start that conversation part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other key thing over here while you're doing this is yeah. for if you're a developer, you want to capture all of these information from all of these different uh, flows, right? So because each flow you are getting important information, you're gathering information from the user. So you can define these parameters and your sessions, your session will always have those values. So as long as the session is active, depending on the conversational flow, you can always look for the different uh, values or parameter values, and then kind of do your backend logic. And typically, if you're using Dialogflow Essentials or any other tool, you'd kind of understand that all of this would typically be done in your backend webbook. With, with CX, you have, you know, these conditional uh, rules that uh, you can directly do it in the interface itself. So if that specific category is null, then we are redirecting them back to the product over yeah. page, correct? That's exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So you can either choose music or, or shirts for now or, uh, or go back. Um, now in the shirt size, then we create the following entry fulfillment, 
should size do you want? And guys, keep in mind that Lee has actually prepared this entire uh, code lab, uh, keeping in mind all the different scenarios and use cases that you would typically do while building your own virtual agent. Of course, this kind of template gives you uh, an advantage of actually kind of visualizing. And based on this video, as well as the code lab, you will have a hands-on experience on how you can actually build your own virtual agents using Dialogflow CX. One of the other thing that this entire code lab also covers is the fact that a very good uh, practice to do is for each of the pages based on different conversations, you should always make sure that we handled the exceptions. So as you can see how Lee is uh, handling a different event routes based on like, let's say when there is a no match, when there is no input, it is always a good practice to always handle those scenarios because when your user is interacting with your virtual agent or a bot or a voice bot, there will always be these exception cases. And uh, by handling these event routes, you'll be able to navigate the conversation uh, towards the end of the, you know, or at least handle the conversation in the right way. Yeah, and um, I would say, like, of course, like, if you're building, like, a, a chatbot for a website and you work with suggestion chips, the chance of deviating is it's much smaller, right? The chance that the user doesn't give the right input is smaller because you're steering the conversation more to visual elements. Right. But that's not the case on a voice bot. And on a voice bot, uh, especially if you don't ask follow-up questions and steer and guide the user, user doesn't know what to ask or enter and he would ask questions that the, the bot wasn't even programmed for so right. very very important and i think some of our audience would already be aware of this lee because we did cover some of these uh, you know conversational design uh, nice. guidelines especially when we were designing like voice bots uh, and also for the google assistant it, the similar rule basically yeah. applies for that as exactly. well so you're going to have exactly. a conversation through voice you don't have any visual interface how do you make sure that the conversation is clear enough so that the user can then uh, go through the next conversation flow so very you're, important you're, thing to keep in mind you're making a good point and i would say definitely like the the pages and the the, the guidelines in the books that the, the best practices that google system wrote on their website mm -hmm. are definitely very useful also for when building voice bots with like the flow for for contact centers yeah you can definitely learn from that and use exactly. those best practices yeah
and for those who are actually getting into building chatbots and voice bots for the very first time don't be intimidated with you know the the steps being followed over here this is to make sure that you guys go through each and every different uh, uh possible routes and glee has done a tremendous job in how you can actually keep this as a template or a documentation so this probably this video would be like a video documentation on dialog flow cx yeah i think because people always ask me like well why is this code lab so many steps and why is it so complicated what you're building but in order to showcase you the magic of cx you really need to have a complex agent uh, yeah, and and not only that if you look at it in a in a different uh, lens if you actually look at it or think about it right now within these two video sessions we've actually covered building out a complex uh, virtual agent i mean it's not long you, you're not going to take days or weeks uh, building this right so once you understand the different logics and how the conversation flows once you understand all of the features that we are showing in the videos today it is very easy for you to then go ahead and then build your conversations yeah So one more thing uh Lee so yeah. for we've been noticing that wherever we are uh, supposed to capture the information we are having the is required field right you check that required field yeah uh can you explain from uh, for the users what is redact and log to and what is is list will do right so there like when you create parameters like here like i create merchandise item i can say it's required that means mm -hmm. like in order to continue the transitions i need to have this parameter slot filled right. so i need the user need to tell me which merchandise item uh, they want to order so therefore i mark it as required i can then once it's required i can uh, uh, connect conditions to it uh, to check uh, to see if it's indeed uh, present mm -hmm. now um redact in log that means if uh, it redacts the value when uh, when logging so i think it means i thought it what it means is like if you spell it wrong uh, it probably still can make uh, yeah it can it, it can fix the value or it knows exactly what uh, which one is selected and is lit i think this makes sense for when you create custom 
entity types mm -hmm. that um, uh, can hold um, one of the options. So let's say uh, you have uh, multiple uh, yeah. options, like a list, then you need to yeah, enable like list. Yeah. Yeah, like like an option, like an option. Options, in, uh, yeah. Option bullets in, in HTML. Right. Yeah. But th that also means that um, if you may, if you work with webhooks and you post to uh, to an endpoint, that it mm -hmm. also collects it. I think it will really look nice in in JSON formatting. You will see it probably as an array with values. Uh, right. Uh, one, two, three. I think that's probably that's probably uh, what's so special about it, or when you want to use it uh, mm -hmm. when working with a backend. Again, we had the same uh, concept in Dialogflow essentials in the form yeah. of slot filling as well. So. So what I'm doing here is I am now setting initial fulfillment. Like, so let's say that you, you traverse through the whole conversation tree and now you're on the final page, which is the product page. The product page uh, can only continue to the order uh, flow when you have artists and merchandise selected. And let's say that you, you skip the whole tree. Mm -hmm. Let's say you said like, I want to order a t-shirt size S. Mm -hmm. But I still don't know which artist it is, and therefore uh, this initial prompt uh, will be shown like, hey, you didn't mention which artist you're interested in. You can ask me mm -hmm. to buy the t-shirt, because t-shirt you know at that moment, of the artist you like, or you can ask me which artists uh, are signed with the label, how can I help? And see uh, the the complexity here, eh? like skipping parts of the conversation, right. but but you do want to make an order in the system, so you, you need to have these values guarded. And of course, I could make this agent much nicer by providing more types of uh, fallback events. And um, while you're staying on this uh, specific thing early, um, so the difference between no match default and no match uh, default, uh, no match one, is the fact that let's say the first time that uh, there is th there was no intent matching done, right? So at that point, it will go to the no match default, correct? Yeah. And then even after that, if the user gets it wrong, then you have one more step where it will go to the no match default. Sorry, the no match one will be triggered where you can have an other set of uh, conversations guiding the users to reprompt or in the right uh, yeah. conversation flow. As an example, you can think of it. Uh, I mean, when you use the Google Assistant, right, and you ask questions in the Google Assistant, and right. understand then you often hear the, the assistant saying like i'm sorry i couldn't understand yeah and you say you, you rephrase yourself you say it another time what you don't want is here again i'm sorry i couldn't understand i'm sorry i couldn't understand i'm sorry exactly the user understand. gets no, bored about it very yeah. Big yeah. all right so uh now we need the conditions i think we're we're very close towards the the end of these uh, instructions. Mm -hmm. And um, fashion just between us, I think this is probably where we should stop the video and uh, probably mm -hmm. create another f schedule, another uh, session uh, for another video, sure. uh, I think. Because 
it took long much longer than we uh, anticipated yeah but i think we kind of covered some really good uh, yeah details as well so i agree see what i'm doing now is i'm going to set an um a preset and not a preset of the price so in case uh the parameter is two or more movie mm-hmm. then i know already the price because there there's no i mean you can choose between two or movies so i'm already setting the the price in the yeah as a, a as a preset parameter so i can always refer to that later it's it's just a trick what i'm mm-hmm. doing so once all the parameters are captured once all the values are captured then it will automatically go into the confirmation page yep that's what i'm doing so now i'm creating like a bunch of uh, of conditions like one condition where i check for if it's a t-shirt one if it's music and one if it's the to a movie and it always continues to uh... mm-hmm. so basically i'm just checking all the possibilities in order to uh, continue an order because i don't want to make an order where the artist or the merchandise or whatever is uh, like if it's a t-shirt i need to have the size in order to continue right that's what i'm doing here i'm saying like yeah if if there is an artist specified mhm and the the merchandise item is a t-shirt then i need to know then the the shirt size cannot be no i need to have a t-shirt size and if that's the case then i'm going to again i'm doing this trick because i know now it's a t-shirt so uh or then the price is 25 in in real life uh, scenario you probably would fetch the price from from the database right. but since this is a hard coded uh, example i'm just doing this simple trick and always getting access to the price and for people who are wondering how we can get the pass that value to the database or get that so that's where you can see that option called enable webhook is there so that you can pro- provide that yeah, information yeah. yeah so you can, can you provide your it? webhook url in that specific slot. Yep. And if you go to a uh, manage tab, um eventually you will have a whole list of all the webhooks here that are available for you. Correct. Yeah. You see I need I need to have five conditions here like for t-shirt long sleeve for digital for mp3 and for uh, to a movie I think in one of the previous ones you didn't add the double quotes for the price. Oh, I don't know if it matters. I think mm-hmm. it shouldn't be. Let's just follow the steps. Uh, yeah. yeah. Probably works because I think everything yeah, is Yeah, I think it's a string so it should be. Yeah.
yeah i'm creating some additional um conditions here that is like yeah if the if the category basically is merge is if it's a music item mm -hmm. but i um yeah and you selected them a cd or a merge or a digital album but you don't know the album name i think then you still need to yeah you still need to know which album you would like so we basically you know with all of like these custom expressions and conditions yeah. we are making sure that we are trying to capture as much uh, possible scenarios as possible yeah and um i don't have it here but in the labs but actually i should also show uh, the suggestion chips again i'm not doing that here but um that that will be nicer because mm -hmm. then uh because if you skip that part, you don't know which album names are there and you need to present that. If you want the greatest hit album or your life album. And the same is for the shirt. Like if I know if it's a long sleeve or t-shirt, but I don't know the shirt size. Mm -hmm. I would also I would also need to know which shirt size you need. Which size you, you want. Might be that the question comes out of the entry fulfillment, so it will, it will be double up, but we'll figure that out later. Um, yes, I think um, this is a nice moment to test what we have. So I think, Lee, I think probably for a better visualization, why don't we try out the dialog for Messenger so that we have all yeah. the suggestion chips. Yes. All right, so by now, we wired all the pages and created all the transitions, the conditional transitions. We created the intent conditions and we even created some event handlers uh, with uh, fallback messages on no match or uh, no input. Let's see and test this in the dialog flow messenger to see if uh, our agent works. So I go to uh, manage mm -hmm. and then I click on integrations for messenger and let's try it out. Hi. Which artist? Uh, let's pick Alice Googler. To work with Alice Googler. Awesome. We sell shirts, mu music, or the tool movie. Which one do you want? Well, let's pick shirts. Do you want the long sleeve or t shirt? I want the t shirt. What size do you want? Let's pick S. And that's it so far. Let's see if we can uh, test it also by asking the question on a different way. Mm -hmm. Let's start by asking, I want to buy music of Alice Googler. You see that it skipped part of the flow. I can mm -hmm. immediately say, greatest hit. Do you want this album on CD or MP3? MP3, yes, works as well. Awesome. So in the next set of steps, what we, uh, what we will work on, uh, mm -hmm. we will work on some conditional uh, templates. Because what we eventually want to do is what you see here already in my example, I say like the digital album of Alice uh, Googler greatest hits cost 10 bucks. Shall I continue the order? Mm -hmm. This is a, an, a variable part, right? Because if I would have picked a t-shirt of the Google Dolls mm -hmm. size S, then the response message would look different. Uh, and right. that is something that you can do with conditional responses. Uh, we'll see that in the in the next video. Awesome. So thanks a lot, Lee. I mean, this has been an awesome video. And especially in terms of what we've covered, we've covered a lot. And uh, especially in terms of how to handle uh, different kinds of routes. We've talked about pages. We've seen flows, how to handle the conversation. Uh, the conditional routes, especially. So we've had, uh, we've covered basically a lot 
in this uh, specific tutorial and i'm looking forward to what we uh, how we take this uh, specific uh, virtual agent from here into the next level in the next set of tutorials so uh, thank you lee once again for being on the channel and for everyone who's joining us for the very first time if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel for more contents so with that being said my name is sachin and see you all in the next one